Hello everyone. If you're new to Python programming, you might want to start using an integrated developer environment or IDE to help you. IDEs are powerful tools that offer features such as linting or checking for your code for errors, code execution, debugging, and even unit test execution. There are a lot of different IDEs out there for Python. Not one is better than the other. But today, we're going to look at just one of these ones in particular, VS Code. VS Code is a free open source project managed by Microsoft. It's also cross-platform, meaning that it'll work on Windows, Linux, and Mac. It's my personal editor of choice, and it's the one that I recommend to my students. In this video today, you'll learn how to get VS Code, install the Python Visual Studio or the Python extension, and create and run a Python script, as well as learn how to set breakpoints and debug the script. So let's get started. first thing you're going to want to do is navigate to code.visualstudio.com. There you'll be presented with a page that looks like this. And you're going to want to download the um, executable that's going to be used to install it. So go ahead and click on that download button. Uh, there we go. Uh, select the appropriate uh, binary that you need to install, and then obviously save it. Once it's done downloading, Go ahead and run it. And just go through the prompts. There's nothing really super special about the installation other than its location and where you want to put it, whether you want to add things to the show, the, to the path. Um, there are a few things um, that I like to add in there, but they're not necessary. You just need to kind of really just go through and say, go ahead and install. And that's really all you need to do for that. Now, I assume that you have Python already installed on your, your computer. And if you don't, then I recommend using Anaconda Python. Anaconda Python is a distribution of Python that comes pre-installed uh, with a bunch of Python packages that are very commonly used, especially in, in data science. You can get that by navigating to anaconda.com forward slash distribution. And from there, you can go ahead and download it. If you don't want to use Anaconda, there's other ways to install it. And I actually highly recommend you visit the Real Python um, article. And if you go to realpython.com slash installing dash Python, in that article, it goes really in detail about how to install Python for each of the different types of uh, systems that you may have in there. So here are a couple of options to install it if you don't have it. If not, then we'll go back. Uh, if you already have it installed, then good, you're ready to go. And once you've done that, go ahead and launch uh, Visual Studio Code. And here you go. You've got it presented and ready for you to go. So the first thing you're going to want to do when you open up Visual Studio Code is actually install the Python extension. The extensions in, Py in Visual Studio Code are add-ons to um, the application. And they add different types of functionality, visual changes, um, and, and even some checkers, those types of things. The Python extension allows you to have a linting or checking of your code, debugging where you can actually execute the code and run and, and figure out what's going on uh, while during uh, code execution. And it also has some auto completions, meaning that if there's variables already in scope um, or object methods, you'll be able to quickly see what those are and even auto complete them using the tab button. To install the Python extension, what you're going to do is you're going to click on this button right here that's got the four squares. Go ahead and click on it. And then at the very top, you're going to search for Python. It should be the very first thing that you see with a star next to it by Microsoft. Go ahead and click on that install. It doesn't take very long, and it's really quick to install that. And then once you've done that, you're good to go, and you have that. Now, when you start running some of your Python code, it may pop up with a little error in the bottom right corner that says PyLint is not installed. Um, if you've installed Anaconda, you won't run into this because Anaconda comes with PyLint already installed. But you can use pip to install pylint if you don't already have pylint in there. If you don't know what pip is or how to use it, I recommend you go to the real Python uh, article, real Python slash what dash is dash pip. And in there, it explains to you exactly what pip is and how to use it um, within your projects. Before we get started in actually writing and uh, writing a, a Python script here in Visual Studio Code, I want to share with you my technique for organizing my code base. 
I typically find a place that's pretty common, the documents folder, and I create a file or folder called either repos or projects. In this case, I'm going to call it projects like this. And then within that, I use this folder for all of the different type of code bases that I'm going to be working with. Um, if I had clone a GitHub repo or another repo from somewhere else, it's going to go into this folder. The other thing that I like to create is a subfolder called Scratchpad. And this Scratchpad project, quote unquote, is an area where I can just kind of play around. It's where I can explore different techniques and just really don't care what's going on. It's a place that if files get lost or changed, it doesn't matter to me. I can kind of just, it's my playground area. It's literally a scratch pad for my code. And then finally, what I like to do is open up a file inside of there called scratchpad.py. So let's create that in Visual Studio Code. As we navigate to Visual Studio Code, if you click to this icon right here called the Explorer, where it's got the two document looking like uh, icons right there, you should be presented with a, a uh, button that says open folder. We're going to go ahead and click on that and then navigate where our projects are. So right here, I'm going to click on that into my projects folder. Then I'm going to click on the scratch pad folder that's in there. Now, when you open up a folder, that folder is going to be considered the root folder. So make sure that you select the folder where you want to be playing around with all the code. Don't go too far into the folder where you're grabbing some things and you might be missing some of the uh, files that are at the root folder, or don't go too far out where you're accidentally seeing folders um, within that that may be of other projects and you don't want to do that. Now that you've done that, I'm going to go ahead and close this welcome screen. And then under the scratch pad, uh, little explorer panel right here, I'm going to click a file, that, the button that says new file. And in there, I'm going to type in scratchpad.py, just like that. And there you go. You have a Python file ready to go. So let's play around with this and see. Let's, let's create just a simple uh, script and see how we can work with it. So first off, I'm going to create a, actually, yeah, I'm going to create a function called main with no parameters in there. And right now, I just want it to be a simple print hello statement. I'm going to use the uh, Dunder main uh, nomenclature, which enables <clears throat> execution only if it's being executed from the terminal. And then I'm going to reference that main function and go ahead and call that inside of there. Now, to run a Python script, if you have the Python extension already installed and it and Python already installed on your system, it's as simple as pressing this green button right here. You press this button, it'll pick it up and automatically run it. And we can see right here that it got executed into there. And it's right there. Now, another way to do it is, and you can see the terminal was already brought up, but let me show you how to bring that up by yourself. If you click on terminal and then new terminal, you'll be able to see a terminal in here and it pulls up with your default terminal. Now, in my case, it's PowerShell, but it might be Command, or it might be Bash if you're using Mac or Linux, or ZSH if you're using Mac or Linux as well. Um, and so what you're going to want to do is, in that scratch pad, what the folder that will bring up is your root folder. So in this case, the root folder is where we want to go. But if there's subfolders in there and you want to run the, the script, you may need to CD into those subfolders in order to run your script. So in this case, I'm just going to type in Python and then scratchpad.py, and boom, there it's also ran inside of the terminal as well. And that is how you create a script and run it within Python. So let's talk a little bit more about debugging your, uh, your Python script. Now, debugging means that what you're actually doing is executing your Python script inside of a debugger instead of the interpreter itself. Now, the debugger is a, a Python interpreter, but it allows you some uh, additional features to be able to debug your code or halt its execution in the middle of it and then be able to kind of determine what's going on. I've expanded our scratchpad.py uh, file here to add a few more things. I've added another function called print status that does some, some printing that moved the printing from the main into here. Um, it calls it with a couple of uh, parameters inside of this. 
And then they still have our main one where we call this, where it calls actually the print status uh, function. And then I've printed out a end of main to kind of show you that, hey, this has been done. And then in our, our main uh, block here, I've got a print that say, this is the start. We're going to call main. And then we're going to call uh, another print that says that this is the end. So when we go through this execution, when we get into lines four through six of the execution, will actually be a function that's called within another function. And let's kind of see how that how that works and how that runs when we do that. Now, in order to debug your code uh, in Visual Studio Code, what you're going to click on is this icon right here that says that says run. It's the one that looks like a little bit of a bug on top of a play button. You're going to click on that, and then you're going to click on run and debug. But before we do, let's talk about how to actually set breakpoints. Now, a breakpoint in Visual Studio Code is a place where you tell the code to halt execution. That means it actually stops the uh, code from running right at that point before executing this line and then allows you to inspect what's going on. So I've set a breakpoint here at line 10 and at line 15. And you can see that. And you can do that by just clicking anywhere along this right-hand side right there, like that. So I'm going to clear line 10 and clear line 15, and you can see that there's no uh, debug points. I'm going to add one at 10 and add one at 12, and you can see that the breakpoints actually uh, catch up right or pop up right here, and you can see them and enable them there as well. So let's go ahead and set a breakpoint right here and see what, what happens and how, how we can uh, run with that. So I'm going to click on Run and Debug in there and then click on Python file. What that's going to do is it's going to pull up the debugger, and once it starts running, it's going to halt the execution at line 15 there, right where I asked it to do that. Now, uh, there are a couple of buttons at the top here that need some explanation of what they do. If I click on this Continue button, what it will do is it will continue execution of the script until it reaches the end or another breakpoint. So if I click Continue right now, it's going to go through and it's going to print out the rest of the, the script's contents and be done because I didn't have any other uh, uh, breakpoints that are in there. So let's rerun this again and see what happens now when I put a another breakpoint right here. If I push continue, it will stop at now line 10. And I can see that it stops there. If I push continue again, it'll go and it'll execute until the end. So now let's rerun and debug this again and see what happens. So I'm right here. This button right here is called step over. And what step over is when it executes that line, it'll execute one line at a time. And then if there's any sub functions that are called within that line, then it skips over dropping into that function. So in this example, I'm going to skip over anything that gets called in main. And now you can see that I don't have any other breakpoints done, but I'm going to click on this, and it actually executes everything that gets called into main and everything that gets called into print status because main calls print status. And that's all printed here. I'm going to click this again, and that's the end of my script. So now let's see what happens when I do another breakpoint inside of there. I'm going to click on step over for line 15, then step over for line 16, and you can see that I break here in 10. Let's keep doing this again. Now I'm on line 11, where it's going to be calling print status. If I do step over, that means it's going to step over going inside of that print status. I'm going to click step over again, and it continues out and does that. We'll continue and finish that. So now let's look at some of the other buttons. This button right here is the step into. What step into does is that if it's calling a function that you've created, it will actually step into that function, allowing you to um, iterate through each of the lines of code in there. So let's see what happens there. I'm going to step over line 15. Now I'm on line 16. Now line 16 hasn't been executed yet, so I'm going to click on step into. Step into now puts me into the first line of main. I'm going to step over again, and then step into print status. And you can see that now I'm in the first line of print status. And I can continue to do that. Now this, this button is step out. What step out does is it actually finishes the execution of your current function 
and steps out of that function into the previous caller. So in this case, it's going to run line five and line six, and then stop right here at line 11, which is this to the caller. I'm going to do that again. And now you can see that line five and line six were executed and printed out to the console. And then we are stopped here at line 11. I'm going to push this again, and you're going to see that line 11 will have completed and then line 12 will be executed and we should be stopped at line 16. And there we go. We did that again. Now the two other buttons that you see there as well is the restart. So if I start going through and step over and I realize I want to actually rerun this execution, I'm going to push restart and it's literally going to rerun the script as if you had stopped it and started it all over again. And then finally, this button right here just stops the execution. It stops the debugging of it and completely stops that there. Pretty self-explanatory. The well, last thing I want to show you about running a script with the debugger is as we go through, you can see your call stack here. Your call stack is where you're currently at inside of the code. So we've called the main function from the module inside of here, the main script that's here. We've called that main function, and that's now on the stack. And you can see what's in there. As we iterate and go through this, you can actually see local variables popping up inside of that call stack, and that being populated in there. Now let's go and step into print status one more time. And you can see that we're now in the print status right there and the call stack is going into there. And you can see what the local variables are for that function as well, and, and kind of go from there. And keep going, and then as you start going out there, that call stack is gonna get smaller and smaller until finally you are finished. Well, that's an overview of how to run and uh, debug your Python script. Um, hopefully that was helpful to you. In today's lesson, you learned how to set up and install Visual Studio Code on your on your system you've also learned how to uh, <clears throat> uh, install the python extension and then also how to create and run a python script and then the final thing that we did was learn how to set breakpoints and debug the script as always thanks for watching the video and uh, i'll see you guys next time <laughs>